I recently came across this very cool calculator project by Lucas Santos. We're going to be taking a look at this today, have a look at how it's set up, talk a little bit about the tests and how we can potentially improve or refactor this to make it more scalable in the future. Just to give you an idea of exactly how this looks, I'm going to show you the actual application. I have some very basic tests set up inside of Cypress and basically it's exactly what you would expect. It's just a very simple calculator. I'll first show you the test and then I'm going to show you the rest of the code base. Just to give you an idea of how this test looks, it is as simple as you would expect. We just find the correct buttons and enter the correct data and then assert everything is working correctly. It'll be interesting to compare and contrast this to the view test utils tests, which are a little bit different. Before we have a look at those, let's have a look at the actual code base. You can see over here on the left, there are four components, button, calculator, grid, and screen. Calculator is the main component. It basically takes all of these small UI components like the grid and the screen and the button and puts them all together. These other components are all very simple, so we're not going to have a look at those. Most of the action happens here inside of calculator.view. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see all of the logic is here inside of this setup function. We declare all of our variables, we have some unmounted hooks, and then we just have all of our logic down here. Let's go ahead and have a look at how this has been tested using view test utils. So over here on the left, we have our tests. There are four files for each component. Uh, we can see the main one again is going to be calculator spec TS. This is going to contain most of the, uh, the complexity. If we head up to the top, we can see the very first test starts off very simple. These tests are fine at the start of your code base and development lifecycle. I do tend to delete these later on, because I don't find them to be very useful. Anyway, I think it's fine to have them for now. If we scroll down a little bit more to line 147, we are going to see a bit more of an interesting test down here. You can see this one here says, should be calculated uh, based on the correct expression. And this is basically testing everything in an end-to-end -end fashion. It's going to make sure everything is working correctly. The first thing we're going to do is mount the calculator. We then go ahead and find that equals button, and that's how we're going to trigger the calculation. Finally, we call a function called add to memory. It's going to basically type in this, this expression. We're then going to click on the evaluate button and make sure everything adds up correctly. Let's have a look at add to memory and see how that works. So basically what this is going to do is receive an expression. For example, 14 minus five. This is going to split it up down here. So it's going to do one, four, minus and five. And then we're going to loop over each of those characters and find the correct button. We're basically finding all of the buttons. We're then filtering over those buttons, finding the one with the correct text, which is equal to that expression. We then go ahead and say await button.trigger click. We're going to trigger that click. This is in comparison to how Cypress works. You can see over here, Cypress is a little bit more concise. We basically just say the button we'd like, and then we say contains. We also don't have to do await. This is because view test utils is a much lower level tool. It gives you very fine grained control over things like when the DOM is updated, which can be nice sometimes, but it is also a little bit more overhead. Anyway, now we've seen how this one works. Let's head back to our test and see what happens next. After we've done that, we're just going to go ahead and click on that calculate button and then insert the calculation is correct. What we're doing here is testing a number of things. We're not only testing that the application or the, the view layer is working correctly, we're also testing the logic. And this is fine for a small code base, but as your code base grows, this can become a bit of a problem. I was actually talking to the author and he was lamenting that he had to type all of this code just to be able to test his logic. Let's say you wanted to change this and make a scientific calculator. This is definitely not going to scale. You're going to have much more complex expressions here, and you probably don't want to be doing all of this just to test out all of your business logic. So what we're going to do is make a refactor, which is going to make it much easier to test out the math logic without actually involving uh, the mounting of components. The first thing we're going to do is head over to our calculator file and make that refactor. I am fairly confident this is going to be fine because we have a number of tests to cover us. So the first thing I'm going to do is attempt to move all of this logic out of this file. So I'm just going to jump in here and cut and paste everything into a brand new file. Scroll down a little bit more and cut this. And I'm going to create a new file and that one's just going to be called use calculator. So that's just going to be inside of here. Let's go ahead and paste that in. The next thing we're going to need to do is export a new function and I'm going to call this one use calculator. Just go ahead and close that one off. And we have a few more errors we need to fix up. We basically need to make sure we're importing everything. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, this is very easy. I can just jump up here and copy and paste it over here. Finally, now that I've done that, all of my errors are gone. Of course, everything is failing horribly. If we head back to our browser, we can see the test is indeed failing. This does make perfect sense because we're not using our composable. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Before we do, I'm actually going to move this on-mounted lifecycle outside. I am eventually going to make another composable for this. Just to keep everything simple for now, I'm going to comment it out. Finally, if we head back to our calculator view, I'm going to go ahead and import my new composable, and with a bit of luck, everything is going to work. Just to keep things simple again, I'm going to directly return this one inside of here. If we save this one off and head back to our browser, we can see the test is now running, and everything is still passing. This is not really surprising to me. Cypress tests tend to be more high level, so they tend to be more resilient to refactors. Let's see how our view test utils tests are going as well. There's no reason these shouldn't be passing, and it turns out these are actually all going to pass, so these are pretty good tests. They're not testing implementation details, they are correctly testing inputs and outputs. I'm fairly confident everything is still working correctly. This might seem like a small refactor, but it actually gives us a lot of value. What we're now able to do is test this in isolation, we don't have to actually mount our component. So let's go ahead and see how that might look. And it's not going to be perfect, but it's definitely going to be uh, an improvement, at least if we decide we'd like to scale our system. If you decide you're happy with the size of a system, you don't really need to make these refactors. These are just ideas to keep in mind as your system does grow. You do need to be disciplined with these things because as you've all had the same experience, when things get very large and out of hand, it can be difficult to get them under control. Anyway, I'm going to create this new uh, composable inside of here. And we're going to go ahead and attempt to te test out some math logic. I'm just going to say subject, Dot memory dot value and update the value here. Let's just make this one, let's say nine plus five. Finally, I'm going to perform my calculation by saying subject dot calculate result. And now we can go ahead and make our assertion. That's going to be against subject dot memory dot value. And in this case, it should be equal to 14. And that is going to be a string. Let's save it off and give it a try. We can see our tests are running and that is still passing. So everything is still working correctly. We're now able to test our logic or our math logic in isolation. We didn't need to mount our component anymore. And this is a lot more simple. There is still an improvement I believe we can make here. One thing we can identify here is although, although we've separated the, the logic out of the component, we're still very much coupled to view. And this is evident for a few reasons. The main way you can tell this is we have dot value here. This is part of view's reactivity system. So our business logic is still somewhat coupled to our UI framework. What we would need to do is refactor this a little bit more. For example, we would need to move all of the logic outside of the use calculator composable. And what this would do is just wrap all of our core business logic. That is a bit larger of a refactor and we're going to leave that one for a separate video. But for now, I still think we've made significant progress. The other thing to keep in mind is we can easily see that we're doing some mutation here or some side effects because we have this function down here called calculate result. It takes no arguments and it returns no value. So if you ever see something like this, you know there's a side effect going on somewhere. You're definitely mutating some sort of variable. In this case, it's very clear. We start off with subject.memory.value up here as nine equals or nine plus five, and then it's mutated down here to become 14. This is fine for a small system, but you do need to be aware of these things. And we're going to see in the next video how we can continue refactoring this and move our business logic into pure separate functions. And then we're going to turn our use calculated composable to be a very thin integration layer around our business logic. I'll see you in the next video.